Okay, so we're going to combine Chapter 2, Sections 2 and 3, solving one-step and two-step equations. So when you solve an equation, you're trying to determine what the variable needs to be in order to make the equation true. And so when we do this, we oftentimes use something called inverse operations which are two operations that undo each other, inverse meaning opposite, so they're opposites of one another. So if we consider some of the operations that we might be familiar with already, we could look at the operations that are inverse to them or opposite of them. Um, so here we have addition. To undo addition, you do subtraction. To undo subtraction, you do addition. To undo multiplication, you do division. The opposite of division is multiplication, and then squaring and square rooting, and their opposites as well. So first we're going to look at just basic one-step equations. And as I already said, inverse operations can be used to isolate a variable and solve equations. So if we look at some one-step equations, a lot of these you could probably look at and solve simply using mental math. You might look at this one and ask yourself, 5 times what number would give me 20? And you might, might easily be able to determine that g must be 4 in, able to, in order to make this equation true. Um, however, we could also use inverse operations to solve this equation. So we look here at g, and we ask ourselves what's being done to g. It's being multiplied by 5. So to undo that multiplication by 5 so that we can get rid of the 5 and isolate g to get it by itself, we could perform the inverse operation of division. So we would instead divide by 5. Now whatever we do to one side, we always do to the other side of the equation. So these will cancel, leaving you with g is equal to 4. So that's a way to solve it using inverse operations. Here again, what minus 3 would give me 4? And I might guess and check several numbers until I came to the right one, but I could also use inverse operations here. So what's being done to my variable? It's being subtracted by 3. Now if I could only get rid of that, then y would be by itself, which is what I want. So how do I get rid of minus 3? I do the opposite of it. So I take both sides of my equation and I add 3. And we have to do it on both sides because this equal sign states that this side is equal to this side. And so to keep it equal, if I'm going to add 3 over here, I have to do that over here as well, just to keep it balanced. So minus 3 plus 3 is 0. That's why these cancel out, leaving me with y is 7. And that would be my final answer here. So that's the solution that makes this equation true. We can do the same thing with these other two. Here, m is being divided by 2. So to undo that, to get rid of that 2 so that m could be by itself, so that we could isolate that variable and get it alone, we do the opposite of dividing by 2, and we multiply both sides of our equation by, by 2. Now, because these are opposites, they cancel each other out, leaving me with m is 30. And then finally here, x is um, 9 is being added to x, so the opposite of that is subtracting. So we take both sides of the equation, and we subtract that 9. We take that 9 away. This cancels, leaving me with x by itself is equal to 8 minus 9, which is negative 1. So now let's look at some two-step equations. You'll notice in all of these, it took just one step to solve them. We had to add 3 to both sides. Here we had to subtract 9. So in this example, it's going to require two steps. And that's because there's more than one thing being done to the variable, more than one operation being performed on the variable. So if we look here, x, what's happening to it? It's being divided by 2 and then 5 is being added to that. So we want to undo those operations. We want to do the inverse of them. So you might jot down on the side to yourself, 
um, what's being done to x. It's being divided by 2, and then 5 is being added to it. So when we do inverse operations, we're always working backwards from order of operations. So um, first of all, the inverse of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2. And the inverse of adding 5 is subtracting 5. So initially in the problem, these operations are being done in this order, this first, then this. However, when we go to solve it, we do the inverse operations in the opposite order. So if I take my equation, I'm just going to rewrite it here. So my first step is to subtract 5, do the inverse of adding 5. I didn't leave myself a ton of room here, but I'm going to subtract 5 on this side of the equation and over here as well. So these will cancel. Now I'm, I don't have x by itself yet, but I'm one step closer. So after I subtract 5, my next step is to multiply by 2. Again, I have to do it to both sides of my equation. And what I find is that x is equal to 12. Now you can always check your answers to make sure that they are correct. And so the way you want to do that is you just take the original equation and you replace the x with the solution you found and check to see if it works out. Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. So because by plugging in 12 in place of x, it gives us a true statement that our solution is correct. So let's take a look at another one. Here we're solving for k. k is our variable. We want to get it by itself. So we look and see what's being done to k. Okay. Um, so here it's being multiplied by 3 and then 9 is being subtracted from that. So again, you might want to jot it down to the side. k is being multiplied by 3 and then 9 is being subtracted in that order, order of operations. The inverse of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3 and the opposite of taking 9 away is adding 9. So when we go to do the inverse, we work backwards. We do the opposite in the opposite order. So I'm going to take my equation, and my first step is to add 9 on both sides. So I add 9 on both sides. These will cancel, getting me one step closer to k being by itself. <clears throat> Here I have 12 plus 9. 21. And then my last step here is dividing by 3. So I take my equation, I'm just rewriting it, and you take each side and divide it by 3. So those cancel. k is finally by itself, and k is equal to 21 divided by 3, which is 7. And again, you can check your solution. You always want to make sure that on a quiz or a test, you check your answers because maybe along the way you somehow made a minor mistake in your calculation. So this is how you can check it. Just take your equation again, plug in your solution in place of the variable, and see if it makes both sides true. 3 times 7 is 21. And then 21 minus 9 is in fact 12. So it makes your statement true. I'm going to take a look at one more example, another two-step example, and um, talk a little bit about fractions here. So here we have f. We want to get f by itself. So f is being multiplied by two-thirds. Two-thirds f means two-thirds times f, and then four is being added to that. So it's being multiplied by two-thirds, and then four is being added in that order. So we can work backwards. We can do the inverse of these operations just like we did before. The opposite of adding 4 is taking 4 away. 
And now the opposite of multiplying by two-thirds. Now, can you look at that as dividing by third, two-thirds? Yes, you can. But what might be easier to do here is looking at the idea that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of having this division of a fraction, we can look at this as being the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction, where you flip the numerator and denominator, multiplying by 3 halves. So I'll show you what that looks like. So again, I'm going to take my equation. Oh, I've got to give myself some room to subtract 4. That's my first step. Remember, I'm looking in the opposite order. So I'm going to take 4 away on the left side, and then again on the right side. These will cancel, leaving me with 2 thirds f is equal to 6. And now this is what I was talking about. Now I could choose to divide by 2 thirds. That would definitely get rid of this. However, then you end up with these complex fractions, because then you have 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. Okay, that kind of looks a little messy. So another way to think of it is getting rid of this fraction can also be done by multiplying by the reciprocal of it, okay? because what's going to happen is these cancel, and then these also cancel. And then, we, of course, we have to do that on the same side over here, or on the other side, multiply by 3 halves over here as well. So then we have f is equal to 6 times 3 halves, so that 6 times 3 is 18, divided by 2 is 9. And that is our final answer.